Let's bring on the man himself, looking dapper as ever again, Mr. Dan Locke. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is my mic on? Okay, good. How was day one of Socialite? Yeah. Who's your favorite speaker? Yeah. <laughs> ask kissing always works. It does work. Um, let me ask you a question. Now, yesterday in the morning, I share the seven lessons that I've learned uh, building my, my $10 million empire. Uh, it's actually more than $10 million, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, so today, actually, who could summarize the seven lessons for me? Who could do that? Who could do that? Yes. Loud and clear. See if you can do that. No, no, no. The seven lessons. Who could summarize the seven lessons? Each one of them. Each one of them. No. What's the first one? Good. Second one? Money, power, No, no, no. Who could do, like, in order? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. That's, the one? That's the fourth one. Save yeah, it's number three. So this is real good. Save yourself before save the world. Good. Yeah. Good. Yes. Yes. Okay. Afterwards, a round of applause. Yeah. You get a book from me. Okay. So talk to me afterward. I'll, I'll mail you one. So. Today, what I want to do is maybe a little bit interactive, because after these type of conferences, I haven't been to other conferences before. Now, it's not the first conference you go to. And what happens is entrepreneurs, business owners, they attend different conferences, and then they get all excited, all motivated, all psyched up and hyped up, and then they go home and then what? Yes, and do nothing. You know, all the, all the self-help becomes shelf-help. So my goal for you is to make sure you actually take some action. Get some ideas and some strategies that you can do. So let's see how much time we have. I'll go through a couple of things, and then maybe if we have time, we do a little bit of Q&A. Does that sound good? Yeah. yeah. People who are not here, they're missing out. They're missing out. Because the second day is all about implementation. It's about what? Implementation. implementation. So what I would do, so yesterday I shared with you seven lessons, right? Today, I'm going to give you three more. Three more. Three more. So lesson number one, before I get into the lesson, is this. That yesterday, we ta I talked about attention, yes? yes? So attention is a new currency. That money follows attention. So and afterwards, a lot of people come up to me and they ask me different questions about their business. The first lesson I want to share with you is this. In any business you want to get, how many of you actually don't have a business now, but you kind of have an idea? That you think, wow, OK, wow, OK, good. So how do you know? Like people ask me, Dan, is my idea good? Is it, you know, is it viable? Should I do this and this and that? I always say, with me, any industry, any business I want to get into, my first question is, first of all, is there a demand? Not just because this is my fucking idea. Is there a demand? Are people actually spending money buying this thing? People come up to me and pitch me all the time with idea, the investments. Oh, you know, Dan, nobody's ever done this before. Let me share my idea with you. And I run. <laughs> nobody's ever done this before. I don't want it. Oh, Dan, my, my, my tech, this, this is going to be, I'm going to be the new next Facebook. I run. No, I don't want that. I look into an industry where there's already existing demand. I don't want to create demand. Now, this is just my personal preference. I mean, there are people who made a lot of money being a pioneer. The pioneers, you know, usually they have arrows on their back. Uh, most of the money that I've lost in my business career because I was a pioneer trying to do something new. Nobody's ever done this before. Let me prove to you what I could do, right? Sure, I proved how stupid I was. Uh, so I don't like to do that. So any industry I look, look into, I ask, is there demand? Second question is, can I be the number one or number two in that category? Can I be the number one or number two? If there's already number one and number two, well, can I 
aim to be that? Do they have any weaknesses or certain things they're not doing so well? Or can I create a category within that I could be number one and two? So let me give an example. Uh, how many of you have, have heard of a little drink called Coca-Cola? Okay. How many have heard of Pepsi? Have you seen those Pepsi, um, what is it, those are blind, what is it, tasting uh, tests? Yes, how they do it, and they blindfold you and you drink, and seven out of ten say Pepsi tastes what? Yeah. But how come Coca-Cola always kicks their ass? <laughs> Pepsi can never, ever, ever be Coca-Cola because Coca-Cola is first. In any marketplace, better to be first or different, but better to be first. You have that first to the market advantage. So, lesson number one is you want to dominate, not compete. Dominate, don't compete. How many have heard of the idea that, you know, competition is a good idea? Okay, it's a fucking lie. <laughs> For who? For who? You think, you think Apple competes or you think they dominate? They dominate. In any category, any industry leader, they go in, they are not competing. They are crushing the competition. They don't want to win by this much, they want to win by this much. By this much. So any industry I get into, you want to dominate, don't compete. If I look at an industry, look at a business, okay, if I cannot be number one, hmm, can I be at least be number two? If I'm number three and four, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. One of the greatest business books I believe that is ever written, and most, most people don't think about it, is The Art of War by Sun Tzu. How many of you have read it? Yeah, The Art of War. A um, few years ago, I actually wrote a book called The Art of War for the New Millennium. With The Art of War, one of my favorite quotes is, a battle is won before it's ever fought. Most businesses, the truth is, if you actually have done your research, most of them you will know if you're going to succeed or fail before you even put in a dime. Most entrepreneurs, they always, always an idea. So, uh, idea and, and it was shit. Idea is not worth anything. It's execution, it's research. It's, everybody can come up with an idea. But one elegant idea is better than 1,000 semi-good ideas. One elegant idea. So, Idea is not worth a lot. It's execution, it's implementation. I'm not the most creative guy. I have never had no original ideas in my life. Don't like them, don't want them. Because when I go to the bank, when I deposit money, the teller's not going to ask me, you know, Dan, did you make this, make this money with your original ideas? <laughs> no, she never asked me that. So I am not a, an original thinker. I'm not interested in that. I'm a synthesizer. What I like to do is I like to take some best practices from different industries and I connect them together. So let's say uh, traditionally I'm in this industry and everybody does certain same things a certain way, right? Most of the time. And I like to borrow some best practices from other industries. Oh, nobody's ever done it this way. Well, let me, let me do this. And then people think, oh, that's a breakthrough. That's so brilliant. What's so brilliant about it? It's not brilliant. It's been doing this for 20 years, but just from a different industry. So one of the things I would suggest, read publications, magazines, blogs outside of your industry. That's how you get out of the box idea. In my podcast, uh, one time I was interviewing the founder of Priceline.com. How many heard of Priceline.com? Yeah. So, um, Jeff, Jeff Hoffman. I, when I was talking with Jeff, and through the podcast, and Jeff was telling me that how he came up with the Priceline.com idea was, one time he was reading a magazine, some kind of article about fruit, fruit, and how there's a company, basically, they sell fruit, but they do it in a way that, let's say, you know, you have a banana, and it's, it's fresh, and it sells for X, X amount of dollars, but as time, it goes bad, right? So every day it goes by, this company, they would lower the amount of, of, the amount of money they, they sell, the price for this, these types of fruit. So Jeff read the article, and that's how he got the idea. Well, how come we can't do the same with hotel? What if hotel, there are a lot of vacancy, and they, it's just sitting there. It, it costs money for the cleaner to be there. It costs money for the air conditioning. What if we can work a deal with hotel, 
and all these space that they don't sell, then maybe we could, we could sell on our website. That's how he came up with Priceline.com. And you think, oh, it's such an original idea. You listen to the interview, it's not that original. But that's how you get breakthrough ideas. So that's the lesson number one. Dominate, don't compete. Second is verify, don't assume. Verify, don't assume. The number one key, the number one key to business success is to avoid bad assumptions. It's the number one key to business success. Avoid bad assumptions. Most businesses fail because the entrepreneur assumes it's a good idea. They assume everybody would want this. They assume their marketing would work. Because entrepreneurs were naturally optimistic, yes? Yeah. Yes, we, we look at the, the good side of things, yes? That how it's going to work. I'm saying, and I was very, very optimistic, and that's how I lost most of my money. <laughs> okay? So now I'm more a, a realist. I'm more like a profess, professor, professor of harsh reality through that experience. So now I am optimistic, but at the same time, I verify. I, I go through, I ask myself the questions, what could go wrong? That's a very good question to ask in your for yourself. What could go wrong? Not what happens if everything goes right. No, what could go wrong? And not a very good question I have on my desk. So I have what could go wrong and what don't I see? What don't I see? What don't I see? Oh yeah, when I launched this, you know, my business, you know, I, I don't have any business experience. I've got this great idea. I'm sure when I launch it in 30 days, I'm going to make $100,000. That's an and assumption. How do you know? Well, and what if it doesn't? What if not, not only it doesn't make $100,000, you didn't make any money the first month? What if you didn't make any money the second month? What if actually you don't make any money the first year? What if you don't make any money the second year? It's way better. It's, think about it. Think about it. Who has a higher probability of success? Two people. This person saying, you know what? I've got this idea. I'm going to go to the marketplace, and it's going to be so easy. You know, I'm going to launch, and I'm going to be profitable day one. Okay? And people will love it, and they will tell their friends about it. Once they see it, oh my God, man, they, they will be the path to my door. And I'll be rich in one year. Better start looking at that house and a new car. This entrepreneur, you know what? I've got this idea. I think it's a decent product, but I'm not so sure. I have some assumptions in my mind. Let me verify. Who are the competitors in the marketplace? How long they have been in there? What's the profit margin? Are their products good? How big is the customer base? What about their growth? What about new threats? Can I make it cheaper? Can I actually make it cheaper? Let me talk to some vendors, maybe from China, from India, see how much they can manufacture that for. What exactly is my marketing cost? What's my plan? What's my strategy? What if that plan doesn't work? What if I run out of money? Well, I better keep some savings that, you know, how long can I last? Do I have enough cash that can last one year or two years? Who is going to more likely to succeed? This one is avoiding bad assumption. This one is in Disneyland. And nothing wrong, I love Disney. Okay, the inland, right? Fantasy land. This is, this is entrepreneur. So we're optimistic, but we want to verify. You want to challenge your idea. That's why sometimes people ask me a question, I like to say, oh, Dan, you're so harsh, you're so blunt. It's not blunt. It's just nobody's asking you these tough questions. All your friends say, yes, awesome, go for it. And then you say, oh, great, let me stick my you know, life savings into it. And then when the product's ready, you go to them and say, would you like to buy some? No. But I thought you loved my idea. Yeah, I, I love your idea. I support you. I love you, but I'm not going to buy. <laughs> Shit! What did you tell me earlier? <laughs> so now, when I talk to people and say, oh, I love your idea. Okay, pull your, pull your credit card. <laughs> Let's take your order. Would you buy some? Oh, no, I, I don't want to buy some. Then why did you say you love my idea? You don't like my idea. So that's what I mean. Verify, don't assume. It's because of bad assumptions. So don't assume. Verify your intel. Think, thinking going back to the art of war is intel, intelligence. Business is an intellectual sport. 
Business is a what? Who, it's not about who has the most amount of money. It's who has the most amount of intelligence, who has intel, who has, who has access to information. And that person, that entrepreneur is going to win. Make sense? Okay. Last lesson. Kind of ties in a little bit what uh, Mike was talking about. And actually, Mike, what he was sharing is, is very valuable. I know the first, you're looking at numbers and all that. I can see some of you are texting on your thing and, and not paying attention. I was observing because it wasn't that interesting. But it's actually damn important. Sometimes an entrepreneur, the stuff they assume that you're not interested, that's the fucking thing you need. Because as an entrepreneur, if you cannot read financials, you're fucked. Because, <laughs> I mean, you would think, I've seen, let me explain. I see my friends, revenue every single year. It's like going up like that. Suddenly, next year they're out of business, bankrupt. I said, what the hell happened? They don't read financials. They look at the revenue. Oh, yeah, this year I'm making half a million. Next year I'm making a million. Then it's 1.5 million. Let me hire more people. What they don't notice is revenue is going up. Profit is going what? Yeah. The only purpose of a business is to provide you with a future stream of earning. So our goal as an entrepreneur is to turn assets into revenue. Turn assets into what? Revenue. And then from revenue into profit. From revenue to what? Profit. And from profit into cash. Cash. It's cash flow management. No company goes out of business because too much, it's not revenue. Every single company goes out of business because they run out of cash. It's cash. They can't meet the payroll. They can't, they can't pay for the lease. That's what's the problem. So they look at, oh, yeah, revenue is good. Even profit. Profit is just a theory because you can't go to the bank and say and deposit some profit. <laughs> they will look at the profit. It's good, but exactly at the end of the day, how much are you putting into your pocket? How much cash do you have in your bank account? That's why most entrepreneurs, oh, yeah, I'll make the money next month and this and that. Look at the cash. Look at the bank account. They, they run out of cash. I'm paranoid about my companies. Paranoid. I want to have a lot of cash in each of my companies, each of my companies. So last lesson, and that is be somebody, be somewhere, and do something. Be somebody, be somewhere, and do something. Be, something, be somebody meaning that, yeah, you want to be perceived as the, the expert in your field. You want to be perceived as authority in your field. You want to be perceived as the number one person in your field. Be somebody. How could you do that? What do experts do? They have what? What do they do? What do they do? What do they do? Come on, Rob, you know. They teach, they educate, they have, they have a book, they speak, they publish, they give interviews, yes? So put on a different hat. So if experts, they write books, they speak, they publish, they teach. So if I do these things, it makes me an, uh, an expert. It's not like they are an expert, then they do these things. No, you do these things, then you are an expert. It's chicken and egg. So be somebody, be somewhere, meaning attending conferences, meeting with people, connecting with people. Don't just walk up to somebody and say, hey, you know what? I've got this product. Hey, you know what, Joshua, can I sell you some stuff? Not like that. I'm talking relationship. Being somewhere and doing something. Doesn't matter what it is. Just a little bit of something every day. It's like most entrepreneurs, and this is my last thought I want to leave you, is that they get discouraged and they give up because, again, they assume they have this unrealistic expectation. Let me tell you a story an analogy, that I'll be out of here. Think of, again, two people who want to lose weight. And this person is saying, you know what? I want to look fit, and I want to, you know, before summer, I want to get a six-pack ab, and I'm kind of single, you know. That, <laughs> that motivation, yes, you get to have a strong why. So, you know what? And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the gym, you know, once a week, and I'm going to do about, you know, 20 minutes of, you know, cardio and maybe a couple crunches. Then I'll have a six-pack app. That's how most entrepreneurs think. Instead of, so that's an unrealistic expectation. That's a what? 
what are the chances of this guy getting a six-pack ab? On the other hand, he's this guy. You know what? I want to get a six-pack ab as well. And my instructor, my trainer says, I got to go in, you know, three times a week. I got to kind of watch my diet. I got to do at least an hour of cardio and then maybe, you know, a couple, you know, 100 crunches every day. Okay? But you know what? Just in case, I'm going to go to the gym five times a day, five times a week, two hours a day, not 100 crunches. I'm going to do 200 crunches, plus I'm going to do some cardio. On top of that, let me run another two miles. What if acti activities you're thinking that it takes to cut through the noise, whatever activities you think it takes to make that cell, to grow your company, whatever the amount you're thinking, just 10 exit. Just 10 exit. Then you won't get discouraged because now your expectation has been adjusted. Then you don't get discouraged. Maybe it doesn't take 10 times the activities and effort. But I guarantee you, if you actually 10 times your thinking and 10 times your activities, your expectation, chances of succeeding is way high. Does that make sense? Yes? yes? That's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.